Hey everyone, welcome back along to my channel and I hope you're all well. Um, I was meant to have a video between this one and uh, the previous one. I did a whole thing on lensless seascapes and it was a perfect day, a lovely location. I had my holder with me, I had my mirror and my zero image large, large, large format cameras with me. Can't get my words out. And got 12, 12 photos. Unfortunately, only four of them actually <laughs> came out. Had quite a few problems, so I didn't upload a video, but I've done a blog post with all the images on it and had a major trouble getting my medium format film from my Holger onto the film developing reel in a change bag. Anyone who's had them problems before will know how frustrating and nightmarish it is. Uh, so I've put a post up about that, so feel free, go over there, have a little laugh, feel better about yourself. It was pretty awful. But today is a new camera day. After many, many years of umming and ahhing and getting involved with other things, I have finally got myself the Harman Titan large format 4x5 pinhole camera. Now when I originally got interested in pinhole photography about nine years ago, I'm gonna say, this was what I wanted. Um, then popped up the 045, um, which has, uh, if you've seen my videos and photos, you'll know it has an insanely wide angle view and some extension frames so you can change the focal length and a nice fancy shutter system and it just that's what I went for and no regrets fantastic camera still use it today um, brilliant um, but I always deep down still wanted this and I finally got one so huge thanks to everyone for their support on my channel over the years um, the money from that kind of has helped paying for this and for the people who support me and buy me a coffee so a massive massive thanks to them guys I uh, really do appreciate it. But this is a nice, brilliant, rugged camera. And what I love about this, it can take abuse. You can strip it down, clean it up. It's no fuss. Perfect. It's kind of how a pinhole camera should be, really. Um, but this is, so it's got a 72mm focal, which is the distance from the pinhole to the film. Uh, you can pop that cone off and swap it out for other extended extended cones. Um, if you want to buy them or whatever really so that packs on there nicely and clicks in nicely now so I say there we go now I know like I said I do like a fancy shutter system sometime but you can't get more basic and simple and hassle free than just that perfect to be honest it is as simple as it needs to be so that is a fantastic feature. Another fantastic feature is the fact that you can actually pop the pinhole system out and drop it and lose it. This is so basically they sell um, replacements. Uh, they sell blank versions so you can pop your own pinhole in. This has got a 0.35 uh, pinhole which on the 72 gives you an aperture of f206 I believe but nice it's nice a uh, couple of tripod mounts uh, bubble levels cold shoe holder which is going to be a nice uh, to be able to use my hot shoe cold shoe light meter so that can go on there nicely. It's all set up for the shots and it just makes life that little bit easier. So I'll be using that with that. Film holders slot in the back very nicely. And that's in there nice and secure. So really pleased with it. Not used it yet obviously, but I am really chuffed with it. Um, it's gonna be a fantastic addition to my collection of cameras and I will definitely be out using this a lot so getting out and using it I am off on a section of the South Downs today it is raining it's horrible it's not going to be a problem for the camera it may be a problem for this camera but if it gets too bad but hopefully not so we're gonna have a little walk 
get some pictures and see how wonderful this thing is to use. Okay, I have my photo set up. Got it in portrait. Should just nicely follow this wall along and up. Okay, so if we take a look at the light meter reading. I doubt you can see that, but it is reading F8, I say 100, and at 1 25th of a second. Right, and the app I'm using says exposure calculator and all the info pops up i put that in f8 125th iso 100 now i set the new exposure to f200 i'm going to be shooting that iso 400 to keep the exposures down no filter so that's going to give me a six second metered reading now i also need to take into account the reciprocity failure of fomapan so I'll put that six seconds in. That gives me a 37.5 second exposure. So we can set that off as the timer. Right, so that is the first exposure done, nice and easy to use. Uh, thankfully the rain has given us a little break. I've also got my L bracket on here, which make, makes switching it from portrait to landscape a little bit easier. But yeah, so far, so good. Right, so I've just started the exposure on this one. I've got a two minute, 36 second exposure. I've kind of left today a bit late, really. Um, got about an hour to sunset, so the light's gonna start dropping. Not the best time for pinhole photography, especially with foam pan. But hopefully I can get at least, I know there's some nice trees just around the corner and I'll plod over the top and see what else I'm gonna find. I might have time to quickly stop off at a little church as well, depending on light, but we'll just see how this goes. But this is what we've got set up. So, nice and low down with that dirty old puddle, just leading you up into the gate. I'm hoping a low shot might just pick the gate up a bit better, but we'll see.
Right, so I found this nice tree. <laughs> kind of swept over by the wind a little bit. I'm trying to isolate it as much as possible so I've come really low. But, sort of feel there needs to be a bit of foreground interest. But it should maybe just capture the base a little bit. long as it doesn't cut off the top of the tree it should be fine so there you go the light meter was reading 1 25th of a second so it's giving me a six, extra, 6 second thingy and 37 oh, with everything taken into account it's raining let's get this done So there's not a lot of wind today, but I was just looking at the branches. It's nice, certainly, to get a bit of movement on them during the exposure. Just uh, adds to the image, I think, a little bit of a feel. But um, I think certainly windier days are nicer. Personally, I do like a windy day in pinhole photography. It just adds more, what's the word, feel to the image. Hopefully that came out well, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna head up and over now, loop back round to the car, hopefully find at least two more shots. Then um, see if there's enough light to get a couple more before heading home. Sun slowly dropping over there. It is beautiful up here. No one else around. Just how I like it. Bit of an old stump of a tree. This used to be one of them really nice windswept ones, but I think the bad weather over the winter and all the storms that hit has clearly broken it all away. So this is going to be a minimalist shot, which I believe is artistic, and creative. It's not easy doing this with one hand. A minimalist shot. Um, a shot of desperation as the light fades. Got a minute exposure. So let's start that now. But I might get a few of the sheep if they stay still for a minute. If not, it's an experiment. See, um, see what it comes out like. Nice 
bunch of trees, just been walking around, sun dropping behind them. Gonna see if I can um, get something which might work. Quite like that there, with the sun side on. This is where not knowing the camera and how wide it really is becomes a bit of an issue, but I'm hoping should squeeze that in over there. And Might just get them in. I'll come back a little bit. Okay, so that is reading uh, eighth of a second. Quickly work this out. All right, so that's come up with about a three minutes, three minutes thirty. So that light is red dropping off. So. I think I'm gonna have to get the last two here. Is uh, there certainly gonna be any light for the church? That'll be for another day. So this is uh, another quick, kind of a test shot really. It's more see how this camera does, particularly with dis things at distance. Pinhole cameras, because of the tiny aperture, you get the things in focus basically from the pinhole as far as, but obviously the further it goes, it gets softer. Uh, so it can be interesting to see how this picks up things out there. What I've got is these this row of humps coming down the road, just crossing through the centre. Hoping, oh, I might have got the pinhole camera too low for that. Should have gone a bit higher. Uh, and that wall going up the hill, and there's some real nice clouds, but some lovely light cutting across. Like I say, it's not something I'd normally do because most of my cameras are quite wide, whereas this um, is still considered wide, but certainly not like a 35mm or the 25 on the zero. So it's a good test shot just as the sun's setting. So, five minute exposure, good times. So one of the advantages of having the little light meter on top is it's constantly reading, which is um, good and bad. It's now made me realize, now the sun's setting, obviously throughout the five minute exposure, the light's gonna change a lot. So I'm gonna leave that running a bit longer because it's now saying half a second, which will, crack up that exposure time a lot. So I'm just gonna leave it running. I don't think I can actually overexpose this. Let the sun set, close the shutter. So I pushed that last exposure on for another four minutes. The light is just gone. So I'm hoping I've got a little bit of shadow 
detail in that during the first part of the exposure, but I shall see it when I see it. But yeah, what have we learned? What have I learned? One, um, don't leave it till say later in the day, but to be fair, it was a busy day. Um, so this was the only time I really got the camera. Um, love it. It's nice. I really, really like it. It's nice to use. Simple. It's easy. It's going to be have to take a bit of abuse. Rugged. Strip it down and clean it. That's kind of all I can really ask for. Um, I know the image quality is going to be fantastic because uh, they're known for it. Uh, it's good as you can expect from a pinhole. But really pleased. So certainly uh, pleased they finally brought it. I uh, love the look of it as well with the cone. Most pinhole cameras are obviously just like a box and the bigger the focal is, the bigger the box is. To the point you've got like a shoe box on a tripod, uh, which is fine, but it's um, not always the nicest, plus obviously all the extra weight, uh, whereas this is nice and simple. So really, I think it's going to be one I'm going to definitely use a lot, going to take a lot of places with me and just enjoy using it, which is all what it's all about. So, I'll, um, I'll put together a little blog post in this shoot. There's already one with a few extra photos of the camera, um, if you're interested in that. So make sure you head over there. Um, subscribe, if you like pinhole film stuff, definitely subscribe. Um, yeah, I'll see you on my next little pinhole trip. Thank you for joining me, everyone. See you then, see you next time.